Welcome back. In this video, we're going to introduce the law of sines. We're going to apply the law of sines to a triangle in which we know two angles and a non-included side. So we're going to apply it to angle angle side. And we'll also apply the law of sines to a triangle in which we have an angle and an included side. So two angles and an included side. So the law of sines allows us to solve oblique triangles or triangles that are not right triangles. But in order to do that, in order to apply the law of sines, we need to know at least one side and two other parts. If we have two angles and a non-included side, or two angles and an included side, or two sides and a non-included angle, we can apply the law of sines. If we have three sides or two sides and an included angle, side angle side, we'll use the law of cosines. We'll cover the law of cosines in a future video. We'll also cover side side angle or the ambiguous case of law of sines in a future video. In this video we're just going to use apply the law of sines to angle angle side and angle side angle. So if we have a, a triangle ABC and we label that the side opposite angle C is lowercase c, the side opposite uppercase A is lowercase a, and the side opposite angle B is lowercase b. We've got here an acute triangle or an oblique triangle, a triangle that is not a right triangle. So our altitude might be some height. We don't have a right angle here. Uh, so we'll use the law of sines or possibly the law of cosines. And it will work as well for an obtuse triangle, such as this one here on the right. I'll go ahead and label that one as well. We might have triangles that look like that. So the law of sines is a series of proportions. It says that side A divided by the sine of A is equal to the length of side B divided by the sine of angle B, which is also equal to the length of side C divided by the sine of C. Now we only need two of any three of these fractions to create our proportion and to solve for the missing side. So, you know, we could use A over sine A equals B over sine B. Uh, we could do B over sine B equals C over sine C. We could even do, you know, a over sine A equals C over sine C. So any, any of those, two of those three would work. And we can also use the reciprocal. Uh, we can use the sine of the angle over the side and set the proportions up in a similar manner. What you can't do is have like the sine of angle A over A equals side B over the sine of angle B. You can't mix up the the sides and angles. You got to have the angles on top and the sides on in the denominator or vice versa. The sides in the numerator and the angles in the denominator. You can't mix them. You always want to choose the form so that the unknown is in the numerator. That just makes your algebra a little bit easier. And as I showed earlier, we've got the height here. You can also calculate the height of the triangle using trigonometry as well. So We've got our two different versions of the law of sines here. And we'll use it to solve a triangle. So here in obje objective two, we want to solve the triangle given angle C is 102.3, angle B is 28.7, and side B is 27.4 feet. So, so we have an obtuse triangle here. And you can pretty much label this any way you want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and label my angle C, the one that appears to be obtuse, as our obtuse. I'll put the 102.3 in, and I'll label my side A. Side B is 27.4. We don't know what side C is. Uh, angle B is 28. 0.7, so these are in degrees, so we've got to make sure our calculator is in degree mode. And we want to solve this triangle. So I have two sides and an included angle here. 
So we have side, angle, side. So that implies we should use the law of sines. And as a general rule of thumb, if they give us, if we're given things in tenths of a degree or tenths of uh, length in tenths, we want to answer in tenths. If it's given in hundredths, we'll answer in hundredths. If it's given in minutes and seconds, we want to answer in minutes and seconds. Um, so if it doesn't say, just mimic what is given in the question. A lot of times I'll go out to the nearest tenth or nearest hundredth because I like to be a little bit more precise, but you may have to revert back to your significant digits. So since we have two of the angles, we can always solve for the third angle, right? Angle A is simply going to equal 180 minus the 102.3 minus 28.7. So 180 minus 131, we get 59.0 degrees for angle A. So we know angle A is 59 just by knowing the sum of the interior angles of the triangle is 180. I do recommend, as long as you can, use what you know in your formula, okay? What you know to be true or what is given. So while I'm confident the 59 is correct, I'm going to use the, the 102.3 and the 27.4 and the 28.7. So I'm going to start this off. I'm going to try and calculate C right away. So C over, because my unknown is in the numerator, over the sine of 102.3 equals angle B, or side B, I beg your pardon, 27.4 over the sine of 28.7. So the side divided by side C divided by the sine of 102.3 equals 27.4 divided by the sine of 28.7. Real quick algebra here, I want to solve for C, so I just have to multiply both sides by the sine of 102.3. and I get C equals 27.4 sine of 102.3 all over the sine of 28.7. And just a reminder, I don't really care what the sine of 102.3 is. I don't care what the sine of 28.7 is. You don't have to find those numbers out. Your calculator will do that work for you. So I can go right to my calculator and I can put it in in that calculator ready form. Or here I have 27.4 times the sine of 102.3. I'm in degree mode, divided by the sine of 28.7. Gives me 55.74 or 55.7 for side C. So now the only thing I have to do is find side A. And I'm going to go ahead and use the law of sines again, A over the sine of 59 equals, and I'll use the 27.4 over the sine of 28.7. That, because I know those are both correct and given to me. So if I multiply both sides by the sine of 59, I get A equals 27.4 sine of 59 all divided by the sine of 28.7. I put all that in my calculator just the way it is. So I have my previous entry here and I can simply do second entry and I'll go ahead and edit that one. I'll change my 102.3 to 59.0 and that gives me 
48.9. So side A equals 48.9. I can check my work here and see my smallest angle opposite of that is the smallest side my medium angle medium side large angle large side that seems to check out so just do a quick check to make sure it makes sense that your small side is opposite the small angle all right medium side gives you the medium angle and of course your large side gives you your largest angle and vice versa. We're going to do an application problem here with the law of signs. The word problem says a pole tilts towards the sun at an 8 degree angle from the vertical from the vertical and casts a 22 foot shadow. The angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the pole is 43 degrees. How tall is the pole? So it appears that our sun is up here somewhere. We've got our sunshine, which creates a shadow on the ground. So we've got a 22 foot shadow on the ground. The angle of elevation from the tip of the shadow to the top of the pole is 43 degrees. So our pole is here. We've got a 43 degree angle of elevation. We did have this 8 degree angle from the vertical. So if our we were perfectly vertical that would be 90 degrees. So this is 8 degrees from vertical, so this angle down here is actually 98, so we don't have a right triangle here. Our goal here is to find the height of the pole. Doing a little arithmetic, we can find our angle here. I'll go ahead and label these. T, P, and X are my angles. And angle T is simply 180 minus 43 and minus 98. So angle T is 39 degrees. Our goal here is to find length P, the height of the pole. So P over the sine of 43, my unknown is in the numerator, equals side T, 22, over the sine of 39. I multiply both sides by the sine of 43 to leave me with just P in the numerator. And I get P equals 22 sine of 43 all divided by the sine of 39. I put that into my calculator and I get P equals out to a couple decimal places 23.84. The height of our pole is we can say 24. And there are a couple examples with the law of signs and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.